rest my, my hidden treasure chest Golden grand piano My beautiful gifts to you Ooh, you Ooh, I leave it all But for you Ooh, you Ooh, I leave it all and Give me one good reason Why I should never make a change Baby, if you hold me, then all of this will go away. Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Budapest by George Ezra. What an incredible voice this guy's got. It just so doesn't like look what he should sound like. It's very strange, but beautiful. Incredible voice, great songwriter, and this is a really lovely tune to play on the guitar as well. Uh, first of all, we need to talk a bit about tuning, though. So the original tuning for the record is down a tone. Okay, so you, if you want to play along with the original recording, you have to tune each string down one tone. So your E string will go down to D, your A string will go down to G, etc. There's lessons on the website if you're wanting to know how to tune your guitar down a tone. But you only need to do that if you want to play along with the original one. Uh, and just for any, to avoid any confusion, Fusion, uh, you often see him playing it live and he's got a capo on. Well, if you tune down, what's he doing with the capo? And the reason that that's going on is because he's actually playing a um, baritone guitar. It's called, so it's tuned down a whole fourth, which is a lot lower, like four frets lower would be the tuning. So he's putting a capo on the second fret uh, and, and the guitar is tuned down uh, two steps lower. That's kind of uh, the general idea. But so let's get on to looking at the tune. So. The most simple way of doing it, it's only got three chords really, G, C and D. Um, and I'm going to show you the way he's picking it because it's pretty funky. But if you want to do like a super duper beginner version, you could just strum the chord. So you got to start with a G chord. My house in Budapest, my hidden treasure chest, golden grand piano, my beautiful Castillo C. You, 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 I'd leave it G, two, three, four, down, down, up. Up down then D on a reason to see it ever make a G. D and wanna hold you then C and it will go to G. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. You could use all sorts of different strumming patterns. The strumming I was just using there most of the way through. Down, down, up, up, down, or down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up up, down, up, you know, that kind of thing. Again, if you're keeping your hand moving all of the time, you can get away with all sorts of uh, different strumming patterns. I don't mean get away with it, all sorts of different strumming patterns will sound good if you're going to do it that way. So, all of the verses is just G chord, right? So, my house in Budapest, my hidden treasure chest, golden grand piano, my beautiful Castillo. Now to the C, for two bars, and then back to G. Then it actually does another verse. I can access a land that I've achieved. Maybe hard for you to stop and believe, but to see. Ooh, see. Ooh, I give it back to G. And it's doing the same thing again to see. Ooh, see. Ooh, and back to G. And then the chorus to D and on a reason to see and gonna make a G. D for one bar, C for one bar, and a G for two bars. And that's it. Okay, so you can do lovely, I mean that's not the whole song, There's, you have to repeat some of those sections. You can do that by listening to the record yourself. Um, but it's actually a pretty simple song in, in that respect. Where it starts to get a little bit more fun is when we're doing exactly the same picking as, as he is. And again, he's playing it on a, a semi-acoustic electric guitar, uh, an old one, a, a Gretsch, I believe. Um, and so it's got a slightly warmer sound. An acoustic guitar always sounds a little bit too bright for me, this song, but um, I haven't got a like an old Gretsch baritone or something kicking around here at the moment, unfortunately. Um, but Works on acoustic, works on regular electric, works on everything. So you just might want to roll your tone back. If you're playing on electric guitar, you might want to turn the tone down off 10 a little bit so it makes the sound a little rounder. Um, don't have a con tone control on this, fell off. Uh, okay, so now let's have a look at the actual kind of picking pattern that George Ezra is using, because it's very, very cool. Um, so we're going to start with the third finger on the third fret of the thickest string. <laughs> the note G, lowest note of a G chord. Uh, we're going to play that note with a thumb. Okay, If you've got a fingernail on your thumb, try and use the side of your thumb so you get a nice round sound rather than a bright one. 
Okay, uh, and then you're going to use fingers one, two, and three of the picking hand on strings two, three, and four. So your third finger, the, the ring finger, will go on the second string. Your middle finger, your driving finger, will go on the third string, and your index finger will go on the fourth string. Okay, so they're going to pick up. So we're going to have bass chord, bass chord, bass chord. So start off just by getting used to that feeling. But can you see that as I'm going down, it's not like finger style where you keep your hand in the one spot. So normal finger style, you keep the, the kind of where your knuckles are, more or less stays the same, especially if you're doing this kind of thing. This part of your hand doesn't move much, right? But in this style, it's almost like you're strumming it. And as you go down to play the thumb, the fingers actually rest on the strings. So they mute the strings, then they play. And then the, as the thumb comes down again on that note, the, they're getting muted. Yeah, can you hear? If I go bass, chord, and I don't actually play the bass note, but the, you can hear the chord stopped. That's not a bad thing to practice. So the, the fingers are going ready to pick the next chord. Bass, chord, put it down. You don't need this harmonic tap. That's just happening because I'm not playing a note. Okay, once you've got that, see if you can get used to just having that bass with the chord stop, then the chord. One thing I noticed when I was watching him do it, sometimes it looks almost like he's doing a circle. I'm getting too much string noise doing it this way, I can hear my fingers scratching on the strings, but my fingernails. But it gives you the right feeling. And that's kind of important to get the, the technique right for this kind of thing, because if you just play it, it doesn't quite have the same, especially when we start fiddling with that bass note, it's got a lot more kind of life to it when that, it's worth just working on that before we worry about getting at anything fancier than that, just try and get that. I can, sometimes I'm still tripping over my thumb as well. This is a kind of a newish technique for me as well, to be honest. I've done it before, but not for a long time. Sometimes my thumbnail is catching on the string and getting a bit annoying, so I'm trying to keep it round. You know, it's kind of a problem. Actually, some of you might have as well. You know, you, you feel like your thumb kind of grabs you into the strings. It's just trying to be a bit looser with it and a bit more relaxed. It's usually tension that catches you if you're trying to do this kind of pattern and you get something stuck. It's usually tension in the hand, so. That's it, now we're rocking. Okay, now once you've got that, there's the second part, which doesn't happen all the way through the song, but it happens quite often, which is playing the bass note with the th on the third fret, the thicker string, chord. Now the next bass note is actually open A string, and then second finger hammering down into the second fret. Super slowly, that's the third fret of the thicker string. Open A string, hammer on chord. Okay, I'm trying to give you the rhythm so you can hear. Again, I wouldn't worry about trying to get anything else going on, first of all. Just trying to get that feeling nice is pretty important, you know. Um, so that's the, what's happening in the intros with this hammer. -on. Now, as soon as he starts singing in the verse, you stop doing the hammer on. Okay, so you leave the second finger down. And you just the bass note is changing from third fret of the thicker string chord to second fret of the fifth string. Now, just before he goes to the C chord, he plays an open A string as a transition. So it's G, two, three, four, two, three, four. That's an open A string to a C chord. And on the C chord, the bass is just staying the same. So it's staying on the fifth string. It'll be played with the third finger. You put your full C chord down. One, two, three, four. 
-hmm. Okay, and then right on the last beat four, the C chord again we've got the open A. So from the beginning of that sequence we've got the G, two, three, four, G again, two, three, four. And there's the third bar, fourth, two, three, open A to C chord, three, four, C, two, three, four. And now we've got the little hammer ons thing again. Back to the verse. No hammer ons. Open A to C, U, C, U, open A, G, with the little hammer ons. And now we get to the chorus. It's exactly the same pattern going on now. The bass note is on the fourth string, the open D, and the fingers one, two, and three have to move onto the thinnest three strings. Okay, then to C. And now for the C chord, our fingers have moved back up, physically up. So thumb's going to be playing the fifth string, fingers two, uh, one, two, and three on strings two, three, and four. And then back to G with the hammer on string. So the D. C, G with the hammer-ons. Again. Give me one more reason to C. Open A, G with the hammer-ons. Little open A linking the C again. D, C, open A. There we go. It's a really, really lovely little groove, this. It's quite a nice pattern. It does, it's taken me a bit of practice. I was surprised because it's kind of simple on paper. But when I actually sat down to try and make it kind of feel right and feel good, it does take a little bit of work to get it sitting in the pocket. At least it did for me, you know. I can't assume generally if I have to kind of concentrate on stuff. Hopefully some of you guys will have to struggle with it as well. It's just trying to get that fear, that, you know, it's almost somehow moving a little bit with it and, and like that thinking in the circles is the thing that seemed to help kind of crack it open for me and make it actually kind of work but it's um yeah lovely tune I, i'm sure you're going to enjoy this one you know sounds great on electric too um with electric the other thing that to just be aware of is to try and play quite lightly on acoustic guitar i tend to kind of drop in my my bass note on there quite quite hard but on electric guitar it needs to be a lot softer or you'll get a lot more rattling so a little bit softer tone there and like i said maybe just turn the tone back just a little bit to round the sound up a little bit if you're going to play this song uh, on electric guitar um, but you just want a clean sound so no effects or anything um, have fun with it and i'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye